I first came to the Keys in 1990 and then randomly found a job in Big Pine Key. We called it Big Time Key. Um, sarcastically, we came from Manhattan to Big Time Key, Florida. It was pre-internet. It was a rural place. I don't know if new divers experienced the same thing here. It was gorgeous. And I had no idea that even in 1990 that the reef was starting to degrade. You know, I, th I think the whole thing about the coral reef is a shifting baseline sort of thing. When I came in 1978, I'd go diving with, with people at the south end of Key Largo. And so I didn't get up to Carysport very often. But when I did, there was, oh man, there was these massive fields of staghorn and elkhorn coral. And I, I think, oh, you know, I have to photograph it. It was so gorgeous. And so I would go up there one day and I would have a fish camera and I didn't get it done. And then I'd go back with my wide angle camera and my stinking Nikonis would flood and I didn't get it done. So years went by and I didn't get it done. And then I went back one day and it was gone. For years, as far back as, as history can take us, we've been fishing in the seas and hunting animals that lived in the oceans and taking life out of the ocean. And this was the first time I had ever seen a project that was designed to put life back into the ocean. I think that there are two things that make the Coral Restoration Foundation stand out. The first is just being how active we are. We really walk the walk, and the second is that scale at which we're trying to work at. We are working at an unprecedented scale. It's unmatched by any other group as well, and so we understand that the reefs need our help, and we're willing to take a very active approach at a very large scale that makes an impact. So people often ask me, uh, can you really make a difference? And, and I feel you have to make a difference. You can't just ignore it. You can't walk away. I think the, the thing that really tied me into the Coral Restoration Foundation was when my daughter was uh, at, at Coral Shores, the high school kids would, would be involved and, and they had a science program and they would go out and plant corals. And I thought at the time that if there is an organization in Key Largo that can teach our kids what it means to preserve our coral reef and to be respectful and to have hope, that's a group I want to be involved with. I was on a dive the other day, I was just on a little conch and nothing, 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 and then all of a sudden there's all these staghorn, obviously CRF corals. And some of them, once they'd succeeded, were huge. Um, and it wasn't really on a marked, you know, a marked site, but there it was, you know, and they had, they had taken. So that kind of thing really makes me hopeful. What I do see with the Coral Restoration Foundation is uh, a consistent and purposeful focus on something that many thought had no hope. I think it's that attitude that permeates the organization to this day, that we have a mission and we're not gonna let challenges stand in our way. We're just gonna move forward doing what we know we can achieve and the results speak for themselves. I went out for the very first time when I went to dive the nursery and the, uh, the outplanters. And when I got out on the reef and saw how that transformed and translated into rescuing what was a completely dead area, that was a game changer. And that's where the hope comes from. It comes from understanding that this really can work. This really can make a difference. This really matters.